you are at it, how fun you are to listen to. Uh, and, and I love that that vibe has persisted. It hasn't been eliminated where I don't think blogs really have that culture that they had for a while anymore. I, I think podcasting is pretty unique in that way. It doesn't seem like blogs have the staying power that podcasts have. Wasn't the worry with podcasts that they would be potentially regulated like radio is over time and that the freedom would just go away? Well, yeah, and that, that 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 companies would come in and kind of muscle everybody out, so that you you had to play in somebody's network uh, and play by their rules exactly. Uh, and that, I mean, networks have come and networks have been successful, but not at the expense of the freedom of podcasting. So that's that's really cool. And that's, I mean, that's kind of it too. Like that's, I mean, that's what we have. Like we have the Inked Geek Studios network. You know, obviously there's you know Diamond Club, Frog Pants, things like that. And it's, but it's not like it's. At least, at least on our end, like, because I I founded this, and that was that was kind of my start. Like, so many people are like, oh, like we have the one show, right? And but that was kind of my start from the beginning. Was I wanted it to be more than one show, and I knew that. So that was the first thing I did was I came up with a studio name and kind of almost worked backwards in a way. Like I got the studio formed with like everything purchased and everything like that, and then I put the show. And, and now it's, I mean, shows have come and gone, but it's four or five pretty solid shows. Yeah. And we, we've had some uh, people come on like Abby Wessels, uh, who does Die of a Trans Woman. Um, yeah. She started on Podbean, but then she was on, she was actually, she was on this podcast and she became a part of the network for a while. And she was a part of the network when she won the podcast award. That's great. And yeah, she always thanks me. I'm like, look, your show is your show. I, I take no credit. But, and that's always been my mindset is we love to have people come on. It's just a bigger family. But the beauty are... of podcasting to me has always been that anybody can do it, and 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 so there's no permission involved. There's no getting somebody uh, to 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 give you the the authority to do a podcast. Right. It's especially if you just do an audio podcast. I mean, anybody that's got a computer can do one. Yeah, it's it's much different than if you go back to like the '80s and '90s with the radio shows. I fixed it already. Did you? Yeah. Uh, you know, where, you know, in order to get on radio, like you had to go and, you know, talk to a guy and then you did late night and then you had to do the right thing. And there was all this very rigid rules you had to follow. Now, if you have something to say, and I mean, that can be good or bad. I mean, if you have something to say, get on the internet and say it. <laughs> but I mean, that's, I guess the beauty of it is no matter what you have to say. Right. And you live or, or die by what you say. So right. if what you're saying is not any good, uh, then no one's going to listen. Right. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it's a little more based on, on merit, but also based on whether you vibe with an audience. And I think that's the other cool thing about podcasting is you don't need to get 18 million viewers to, to have a hit like you right. did in network television or something. You, you just need to find your audience that is big enough to, to make it worth doing, uh, and really likes what, what you're, what you're saying and, and, and the entertainment that you're giving. Right. There was something that Jerry said when he was on this show uh, last year and because the thought of numbers had come up, right? And we were just talking about numbers and, and the difference between a brand new podcast and, and something like uh, serial, things like that, right? And he said that people get so focused on numbers and that like, like he's like, I don't care if you have five people or, if, or, or whatever. He's like, because if you remove the internet from it, if you think about the fact that like, especially if you do a live show, like you have five people who come to you and listen to you without interrupting you every week, he's like, you essentially have a cult. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's like, because numbers get so blown up on the internet. We think of millions and tens of millions. He's like, but I mean, that's five people who have nothing better to do, but listen to you at that point in time, which means that they are your fans and what you do means something to them. And if those five people don't mean something to you, then you're doing this for the wrong reasons. How nice it is yeah. to have the cult of IG then. Right. I know. Yeah. Cause that's what we, I mean, we do our live thing and it's, it's a small little group and we absolutely love it. And we have fans that I consider to be the best fans. They're there. They're consistent. Yeah. They're emphasis on the live thing. Do yeah. doing it live was the best decision to have the chat room involved. That's been a big thing for us. So, yeah. Cause when you have a chat room like that, you, you get immediate feedback. You get that feeling of five people sitting in the room right. with you. Right. And I, and I could tell already looking in your chat room that you've, you've got regulars, you've got a couple of names that I recognize and they're talking to each other and they're reacting to what's happening. And 
that's that's when the magic happens. And at that point, the numbers don't matter. It's worth doing. Exactly. So you were doing this obviously before live was really an option. So like, I mean, you had just touched on some of it there, but so being on both sides of the coin there, like, did it change? Like, did that fundamentally change some things like the ability to just go live and have, I mean, you essentially go from like a pre-recorded to a, like a, 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 a canned laughter type sitcom to like having like a Letterman audience, yeah. things like that. Well, it's funny. Um, I came from tech TV where two of our most successful shows were live and had chat rooms. Uh, and this, you know, was going back to 1998 uh, when the network launched, they'd been doing that. So it was definitely possible. And the thing that I took from it was that having interaction with your audience was important to making a better show. So when we started doing the first podcast at CNET that I did in 2005, even though we didn't do it live, we could have, uh, but we made sure that we incorporated the audience by email and we created forums and we got in the forums and we answered people. And I was just obsessive about finding where people were talking about us, what they were saying about us and, and getting engaged with those people. And then I think it was around the time that Stick'em came out that it became easy to stream live. It wasn't something where you had to, you know, set up a server and, and, and on your own and, and do all of that. And, and I was like, well, we should just stream, we should just stream like a spy cam while we're recording the audio podcast. And so we did that and somebody started an IRC chat room for us. And so we started paying attention to that IRC chat room and it just kind of all came together. And suddenly I was back at tech TV, 1998, except I didn't have to have a team of engineers creating it. It was right. all available right there. And, and yeah, once, once we started doing that, what we had been working really hard to do became a lot easier. We didn't have to go out and talk to people outside of the recording. We could just talk to them instantaneously. And there's, there's no replacement for that. Right. Yeah. It seems like you guys kind of Jimmy rigged together what we have now by just making a free account on Twitch, which is really cool that like, again, like Brandon had said, like you were kind of on the other end of that, which must've been an experience and kind of gives you a look and be like, man, it is so much easier now. There was a, a segment on the episode from LA where Jerry was kind of hosting it of DTNS where he had asked the question is podcasting easier now than it used to be. And, and everyone kind of went back and forth and, uh, and I think one, somebody had made a comment about RSS feeds and how like you had to go and type up the RSS feeds. And I'm like, like, I don't even use WordPress because that confuses me. <laughs> like I tried to use the WordPress blueprint thing and I'm a computer guy, but I'm like, I don't know code at all. So I just, you know, pod host, here's my RSS feed. Uh, but it's, no, it, it's, it's really awesome to be able to come in and have a voice and you meet so many people. Like I, one of the reasons I'm a big fan of yours is because I learn so much from your show and the beauty of your show is it's not just your show and the guests, but also the community that you've built around your show. And you have such incredibly intelligent people that watch your show. And it's, yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky in that respect. Uh, and, and I try to, thank them and highlight them when they when they share that expertise but it's one of my greatest hopes for this show daily tech news show but but it's always been for all my shows is that i can take my talents you know as a moderator and a host and provide a conduit for people to help each other so so that that somebody who's like hey i actually i actually know about what makes you know pacemakers dangerous and good and and I, i'm willing to share that information and then the guy listening to the show who actually is about to get a pacemaker gets a little information to help him feel better and make a better decision with his doctor and that's that's a real life example that played out over the last week and a half on daily tech news show and i really want to do more of that where i don't have to be the expert on everything i can't be uh but we've got all these people with all these different talents and we you know we can be the place that puts those jigsaw puzzle pieces together. Right. Yeah. See, I was, uh, I mean, obviously not as serious as that. No, the one thing <clears throat> it's funny. I always, when I, when I'm listening to you guys and when I say you guys, I, I, I think like you, Scott and Brian, mm -hmm. right? Like when you do like the tech segment and I, I like, especially around Apple season because I am a diehard Apple fanboy, 
as is Scott and Brian or are Scott and Brian. So you were always the voice of reason where it was like, well, it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really cool to kind of have those different voices. And you yeah. guys are so genuine and so personal with all of your shows. It does. There, there is that connection of like you, you feel more like a friend than a fan, which is awesome. Which, because of you guys, which is the feeling that we try and do, and it, it, it makes for an incredible community. Well, that's one of the, the keys to having a good podcast, is really caring about whatever it is you're talking about. Right. Because uh, I've, I've had people ask me, like, what kind of podcast should I do? And I'm like, I don't know, what are you interested in? But And they're like, no, no, I want to do something popular. I'm like, well, then you're approaching it wrong. If right. you try to do something popular, you're just going to end up doing something you're not that interested in, and it's not going to work. So you got to start with, what are you interested in? And then maybe of the things you're interested in, you can find an angle like, well, I think that one might be a little more interest to people. That's totally fair. Right. But don't just start, you know, you're, you're the tail that wags the dog if you're trying to start with like, I want to do, a, I want to be successful with my podcast. Like, well, sure, everybody does, but that's right. not where you start. You start right. with what are you interested in? What are you good at talking about? What direction do you want to go in? And and that makes for a much better show because then it's personal. Then you can be genuine. You can just be honest. Uh, and, and people appreciate that. They notice that. Right. That seems to be the thing with true crime podcast right now. Like every podcast group of men on yeah, Facebook, it's the true. Fad. Yeah. True crime is the, it was like, Oh, started a new one. And it's like, you know, that like 90% of these aren't going to be around in three months. No, it's the, funny that people don't think that stuff through. I mean, you're obviously going to hit a wall if it's something you're not interested in. Right. If you just are going out there to be popular, that is totally the wrong reason. Yeah. The whole reason we started I mean, this is because we wanted to have fun doing it with each right, other. Right. We're here to hang out, talk with our friends. And, and that's what it's for. I mean, that's what I enjoy about it. Right. I'm not here. I, I like listeners. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I'm not here to gain a huge fan base. I'm here to have fun with my friends. Right. But ultimately, yeah. that's what brings the fan base. Right. I wonder if somebody could pull off a legitimate podcast where they're like, no, really, I just want to be popular. That's all this podcast is about, is me being popular. And it's just authentic enough because that's who they are. <laughs> that, that, that it can work? I don't know. The iCast, I'm super self-absorbed. Right. Yeah. Come listen to me. I mean, there's going to be some, like people that were famous before being podcasters that do podcasts that that's exactly what it is like i'm just doing this as another av a revenue stream yeah, yeah. And i see a lot of youtube creators do that um, right and some of them do it better than others but they're like oh i guess i should podcast um, right and it's like well, okay <laughs> it yeah. seems to be one of those things where it's be it's like obviously you know we do it because we love it and well look at jim jeffries he has the jim jeffries show now right that show has a companion podcast and it's not bad. I listen to it. It's all right. But right. I mean, it just seems like the studio said, well, you have to have one because everybody, that's, that's right. what we're in now. So. Right. It's uh, And all they do is recap the show. Yeah, of so. course they do. There was there was something that I wanted to address because it was and this is why I wanted to talk to you about it, because I would because one, you weren't on that episode. And then also they didn't really go into it. Uh, the, when it comes to podcasting now, as opposed to then that wasn't addressed is everything is saturated. Like you could want to do a podcast on the most unique out there, weird fetish fandom thing that you think you're the only one that likes, and you're going to find 20 podcasts about it. Yeah. Like, do you think that that does become like, it, it's, it's more, I mean, obviously it's more on us to be the cream that rises to the top, but do you think that's harder to do now where like, I mean, and Scott has said it too. Like if he started the instance now, he would just get lost in the, in the storm, you know, like maybe, maybe not. Uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say that discoverability is harder, uh, than it used to be. Although in the earliest of days, it was hard because nobody knew where to look. There wasn't like a single place. So you just kind of had to somehow get the word out. Like, Hey, we're doing a podcast over here. Uh, you know, let me post this in a news group. So that, so that people know we're doing a podcast. And then iTunes started their podcast section. And for that sweet spot, everybody who was doing a podcast could get highlighted in the iTunes section because there weren't that many people doing them. Uh, and, and then, of course, that went away as, as, as people flooded in. And now it's, yeah, discoverability is, is, is a problem. It's harder to get yourself seen. But at the same time, I think the best ways to build awareness of your podcast weren't lucking into getting featured in iTunes. They were 
having people on your show that were guests that were interested in what you were talking about. They were, you know, posting in places that are like, Hey, you, you guys are, you guys are talking about Chrome on cars and my Chrome on cars podcast is, is out there if you're interested and, and just, you know, getting, getting like-minded people right. together. And then at that point, you start to build up if you're good enough people start telling each other about it like hey you know the, i found the perfect podcast you're talking about chrome on cars you got to subscribe here it is <laughs> then you find the google chrome podcast and then you get down a rabbit hole and you're just lost yeah hours. then you got seo problems <laughs> and it becomes a nightmare uh yeah no it's uh that's one thing i think that that was the hardest thing for me to learn was the the spreading and the marketing and you you quickly realize in the world of social media that sharing and hashtags don't get you everywhere like you have to be, you have to go into to groups and, and, and whether it be Reddit or different Facebook groups and, and even then people do that step, but then they don't engage. They just copy paste yeah. their links and like, nobody knows who you are. Like you just go but, in there and, and, and it's the same thing that makes a good podcast. You got to go in and be genuine. Right. Yeah. Be yourself and, and be who you are and, and it, it works out great, but no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's driven again, so many people to different things and people discover things about themselves. They discover new things they like. Um, I mean, I have such trust in the, the content that you guys usually talk about. If it's something that sounds interesting, I always try and check it out, you know, and things like that. So you discover different things. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool world and it's cool that you can connect with people. I mean, yeah. we're all statewide, but I mean, then you get like Patrick and Terpster and, and then even branching beyond frog pants and diamond club. Like it's really cool just where everybody is. So, yeah, no, it was really fun in, in, in England. We did a meetup uh, on Monday for Daily Tech News Show and we got 50 people showed up. You know, some of them were like, oh, I got I had my last train leaves in 20 minutes, but I had to stop by and, and say hi. And it was just blew me away that here halfway across the world, there were that many people willing to go out of their way uh, to to just come and, and <laughs> say hi and shake hands and watch me lose at ping pong. <laughs> Not a ping pong expert. No, man, I got real close to beating Will Harris, but he he, he bested me. So there was there was one article of of tech that I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Uh, we discussed it very briefly in the pre show, but that is the new thing that's coming to digital media, or the new thing that's here with digital movies and media, which is movies anywhere. And it so I read about it. What was it maybe a week ago, a couple of weeks ago that this thing first kind of came to light in mainstream discussion. I mean, I don't know how long it's been well, being it just, talked it about. It just launched two days ago. Right, but it had been being talked about, right? Didn't it? Or I swear I saw something maybe well, you last had, week. you had Disney doing their anywhere Disney thing. anywhere. And maybe that's what I thought about. This was born out of that. This, so. thing, the, this bugs me about movies anywhere is uh, this is not new at all. As you rightly pointed out, Disney had their Disney movies anywhere. They've had it for years. The rest of the studios have had Ultraviolet which you could do this with. They just didn't have the right partners. Right. And so this week, Movies Anywhere launches, and suddenly I get all these people on Twitter like, hey, there's this great thing, Movies Anywhere. And I'm being like, yeah, I've been covering Disney Movies Anywhere and Ultraviolet for like five years. <laughs> but is there not... So I, I, I get trapped in the camp, as I mentioned. I'm a diehard Apple fanboy. Um, everything is an iOS device. Okay. As his face drops. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I am, and, and, and maybe it goes against the, the being a smart geek guy, but no, I am that guy where like, I don't need to hear the announcement before I know I'm going to upgrade. You're not alone. Right. And, and, and part of that is because of the ease of like Verizon edge and AT&T next and things like that. Like I traded my old phone, get the new phone. Sure. My, my bill doesn't change. You don't have to think about it. Right. So, but part of that is, is like, so the kids have smart TVs in their rooms and things like that. And the other ones that don't like, there's a couple Roku's because they're cheaper than Apple TVs. So that basically walls anything that you buy on iTunes. And to my knowledge, this was the first thing like, yeah, if I go buy a physical movie and get ultraviolet, that's usable in multiple locations. But I don't buy physical media. Everything I buy is digital and I buy it on iTunes. So now this takes everything I've bought on iTunes and lets them watch it on Amazon video. What if I told you? No. Um, <laughs> so we should explain what Movies Anywhere is from the beginning. And then I'll explain to you why like almost nothing is new about it. But they did the one thing that is new about it that's finally made it catch on with everybody. Okay. Uh, Movies Anywhere is a system where... 
if you buy from one store, it shows up in all the other stores as well as the Movies Anywhere app. Right. So if I buy from Vudu, Walmart's service, it'll show up in Amazon. If I buy from iTunes, it'll show up in Google Play and uh, vice versa, right? In all the combinations. This is not new at all. This has been going on with Disney in exactly this way with those four partners for a couple of years now. And every Disney movie I buy, I make sure that I buy it in one of the partners so that I get it on all of them. So when Star Wars came out, I bought it on Vudu because Vudu was the only one that was part of Ultraviolet and Disney movies anywhere. And it meant that five of the six Star Wars movies that I bought when, you know, about the showed up everywhere. Right. A New Hope is owned by Fox. Fox wasn't part of the deal uh, with Disney movies anywhere until this week. So that one didn't show up, but they were ultraviolet and ultraviolet. You didn't need to buy physical copies. If I bought an ultraviolet movie on voodoo, it would show up in all the ultraviolet partners. Problem with ultraviolet was their partners were Fandango now and uh, <laughs> someone else that I can't remember <laughs> right now that no one used. Right. Right. So Disney movies anywhere was like, they've got the right partners. They've got Google, they've got Amazon, they got voodoo. They they've got Apple, uh, but they only have the one studio. And then all the other studios were part of ultraviolet. We're like, Oh, ultraviolet is great. They've got all the studios, but they've only got one useful partner. Uh, in voodoo. And so what Movies Anywhere has done is Disney's finally broken down the ultraviolet studios and said, come on, everybody in the pool, we've got the four big ones. And so now it works because it's more than just Disney on the four major platforms. And the only holdouts right now are Lionsgate and Paramount. And apparently they're still in talk. So it's not like they won't ever come in. And then, yeah. And then you buy something through Movies Anywhere and it doesn't matter what device you're on, you get access to your whole library. Now, it's kind of buggy. It's been kind of buggy this week because when you buy something, I've noticed it doesn't show up immediately. So that I might bought, have been rectified bought, a little bit. I bought Citizen Kane through Movies Anywhere on iTunes, showed up in iTunes right away, but it didn't show up in Movies Anywhere right away. Oh, interesting. I had to wait like a half hour before it finally popped up. Because I linked, like I linked uh, my Amazon and my iTunes, and then basically instantly in my library on Amazon. Oh yeah, yeah. And then no, when you link, the minute you link, most stuff has been showing up. I had a little problem with Voodoo, but but yeah. But like when the I four movies, stuff, the four movies they gave me for free. I only owned one of them prior, which was Lego Movie. But yeah. like Jason Bourne, Ice Age, and whatever the fourth one was. No, I'm talking about if you go into Movies Anywhere now and you buy something new. Oh, okay. Like you've already linked. You've already got your free movies for signing up. I see. Okay. All that's in there. You buy a movie. It it had, didn't show up for me immediately. Okay. A, like a new purchase. Right. The other thing I did today that I've tried out that hasn't worked at all, the way Disney Movies Anywhere and Ultraviolet worked previously were if I buy it on iTunes, it just shows up in the other services. I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to use the Disney Movies Anywhere app. I bought Lawrence of Arabia just as a test on Amazon this afternoon. It still is not showing up anywhere else. Now, did you go into the Movies Anywhere app? No, I just bought it on Amazon. And it's uh, that's still supposed to work. Yeah. As long as it's a participating studio, and this is a participating right. studio. Right. Well, my thought was, like if, like, if you have to go into the the movies anywhere app to kind of like do like an account refresher. Like I'm wondering, no. it's supposed to be running in the background. Well, it's only You're a couple days to. in the launch, right? Right. So I mean, yes, it's buggy, but you should not have to go in and refresh. Yeah. You wouldn't think so. See the thing I'm most excited about. And actually I was talking to him about it. Cause you we know what also... I'm excited about is citizen Kane, Lawrence, Ara Lawrence of Arabia <laughs> and the plethora of old leather bound books behind it. <laughs> That's what excites me. Yeah. The, the, the Why background does that excite you. Because I am a fan of the uh, anachronistic, I guess. Ah, okay, <laughs> very good. <laughs> it. Uh, I bought Citizen Kane because we're going to be watching it uh, for the Current Geek Film Fest eventually. Perfect. I bought Lawrence Arabia because it's just a damn fine movie. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Very I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, that's fine. By by all all, means. I know it's been mostly me and Tom. So by all, say no, something. No, well, I'm just here to support <laughs> you, man. <laughs> I no, know you were excited. I was it's just not say, like when you had uh, the. Uh, it's not like when you had Scott on, where I had to keep you from floating out of your chair. You know, you're a little <laughs> bit more professional now. Yeah, no, it was total, total fandom. 
Let's go. <laughs> uh, no, but anyway, um, no, what I'm most excited about with the movie podcast is because, again, I buy everything iTunes, but Amazon does that x-ray thing, which is awesome. Yeah. And it's great, no, for, nice. it's great for taking notes when you're watching a movie. So, but no, so that, that's interesting. As you say, it's not new and it's just kind of one of those things where it's, and I guess that happens a lot. Like, I mean, again, being the Apple guy, we get that a lot. Like you guys realize what you're excited about Android's had for two years, right? Right, right. <laughs> well, right and, but the and, thing and is it, that we know with Apple, they're going to do it better. <laughs> it's not new technology, but they're going to iron out all the bugs and it's actually it. going to work. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what they say. Um that's, that's, I, I think hmm. the thing with movies anywhere, though, is it, it is the classic example of it, it existed, but it wasn't done right. It's, it is exactly what you're saying. It's right. like movies anywhere finally is doing right where they have the studios and the platforms all in one service before it was split between two different services. It's interesting that it was Disney that kind of was part of that, because I know in another movie related thing, Disney is the one studio holding out with Apple to get 4K on iTunes. Yeah. Right. And they uh, want to hold on to their pricing. Yeah. And uh which I found that to be interesting because they've always been a company that worked really well with Apple. So Yeah, I mean everybody works well with everybody else until they hit that one issue that they're like, oh wait, no, we're not selling 4K movies for 20 bucks. Right. <laughs> be, be serious. Don't be ridiculous. Also, that 4K that 4K price thing does not allow you to download. It only allows you to stream. See, I man, that was such a huge contention on a couple of the, the the tech Facebook groups that I follow. And I'm like, that's fine. Who downloads? I, and I guess if you have bad internet, like you you will download. But like I, because I have the 4K Apple TV. Or watch on a plane or something, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, but... that's that's true. Yeah. But are you going to have a 4K screen with you on a plane? Like it just seemed I like mean, it was. I mean, if I have the new 4K iPad, I will. Wait, there's a new 4K iPad? I mean, I'm sure there will be. Yeah, that's probably. I uh, I did read that the rumor is, is that <laughs> the. What is it? Because it's it's like somewhere between like February and April that they have the iPad event, right? Because it's I mean, usually... that's, uh, that uh, I think that's when it has been. But yeah, I, I, we I sometimes fall for that trap myself where I put too much stock in the in the past, and then they're like, "We're not, we're going to announce something at WWDC," and I, I'm like, "But you never do that. That's not fair." Right. Well, that was, I mean, that's how it's kind of been. I, I mean, like, obviously, the phones are always September. At least they have been recently. Well, they didn't used to be, right? They used to be June. Right. They used to be announced in January, sold in June. Right. And then they moved it to September. And when they moved it to September, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, this is ridiculous. You're, and then when they stopped announcing iPads in the fall and announced it in March, remember, people like went crazy because there was like two models within six months of each other. I wonder if they realized that if they put a gap between announcing new $1,000 products, more people would buy them. <laughs> like, I don't need a new phone and a new iPad on the same day. Yeah. Yeah, but then people I, I buy them anyway. I think it's yeah. Anyway. But uh no, and now they they threw everyone the wrench this year because they were like, "Oh yeah, you can get it in a week." And then in 2 months for the X. <laughs> so, which I don't uh, It's the X. <laughs> it's not <laughs> no. how Apple said it. No, I know, but it doesn't make any sense cuz there's no 9. There wasn't even a 7S. Like they just screwed everything up. So you don't call Windows you call Windows X then? There was no well, Windows no, because 9. It, because it's a 1.0. <laughs> Is it the Xbox One Ten? <laughs> the Xbox One <laughs> Ten, but and Microsoft didn't call it that. Apple said iPhone Ten. No, no, the Xbox. I man, we've it talked. Was it OS X? Yeah, OS Ten. Yeah, no, well, no, well, no, but it's it's OS X though. It's Mac Mac OS X. Like I just I don't know. I'm Tabs or spaces. <laughs> Uh-huh. No program. No, see, I, I love X. Um, like even like my online name, it's like it's cynic, but it's bordered by the X's. I like X's because I'm a nineties kid. <laughs> so you like X's and Z's. Copy of Pilot X that I could Yeah, see like, is, is a Pilot about. 10 or a Pilot X? It's well, I got to name it, so I said <laughs> Pilot X, but an X can also be 10. It depends right. on what the intention is. Right. You don't go to Rome and say, like, <laughs> hey, all of these numbers are just X's. Diablo I I I Super Bowl X. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Well, no, but even like Final Fantasy, when Final Fantasy X came out, like it's Final Fantasy X because they use Roman numerals, but it was Final Fantasy X. It's fun to but, say X. I'll give you that. Yeah, it is. It just, it flows. It's cooler. It's edgy. It works. X yeah. it is. Microsoft, and we've talked about this before, Microsoft did the best thing with the Xbox One X because it's the greatest naming of all time, in my opinion. 
has have you ever actually looked at the the way they named it? Well, I'm not sure what you mean then. Okay, so you have the Xbox One X, right? Right. So you have the XB One X. Yeah. Which means you have the XBOX. So the acronym oh, right. of the Xbox yeah, yeah. One X is Xbox. Yeah. I. Well, it's the, you have the Xbox, and then you have the Xbox One, and then you have the Xbox One X, which is the Xbox. Right. But exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I just I I, I felt like everyone gave them crap because it was a. 60. Huh. I, we'll just skip 360 in that progression. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it was, I mean, that was a horrible name. <laughs> it was a red ring of death. <laughs> right. That was the 360. Um, the best part about that naming convention was that you had all the, what, what happens? You just, you turn, you turn 360 degrees and walk away. It's like, that's not how that works. <laughs> I had one of the really loud ones too, because I got an early one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that old school white one that like, yeah, if you yeah. touched it the wrong way, you got the red ring of death. It would occasionally, if you put wings on it, it would just take off because it sounded like a jet engine. Right. What do you, you know, being able to sit and chat with you for a little while, what do you do for gaming? Because I noticed other than, I know you mentioned Hearthstone now and then. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of time to play games, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I, I played Legend of Zelda uh, on the Switch. I play Hearthstone, although my trip to England just kind of wiped me off the map. So I got to get back into it. Right. Um, but I, I don't do a ton of it. My my favorite games historically have been strategies and sims. So civilization comes out, I always get that. Oh yeah, and play it. Uh, and I I even play like Civ Revolutions on the iPad and, and stuff like that. But I was a big Sim City fan in the day too. Right. Yeah. No. Sim City. Uh, Sim City was great. Civ. I'm I'm in the same boat with Civ. How did you feel when they went to like the new octagonal structure? What was it? Civ Five. It took was a little getting one. used to, but but I definitely solved some problems historically that I had. It's one of those weird things where when you've been playing a game long enough, you're like, okay, I've adapted to the thing that used to bother me, and then they finally <laughs> fix it 15 years later, and I'm like, <laughs> now I've got to adapt to the thing that I wanted you to fix a long time ago. But at right. least I'm glad you fixed it. No, that the, the when you say that, the first thing that that makes me think of is. Uh, going and I, i'll say old school even though it's not appropriate like old school like guitar hero and rock band back yeah. back before the controllers could auto calibrate so like i played with whatever lag my tv had and that's the lag i got used to so that's how i played and then like yeah. with rock band 2 when the controller could auto calibrate i'm like man i suck now because <laughs> <laughs> i had to readjust to the lack of lag yeah so yeah. but yeah no it's a. Uh, they're fun. No, civs are great. I love civs. I've lost so many days in civilization. Oh my gosh, yeah. SimCity and SimCity 2000 and Civ 3 were were out about the same time and I pretty much did nothing but go to the bar and work and play those games. Now, were you one of the guys back in the day where like you would take the save file and like email it to buddies and do like a, a pseudo online civ game? No, I didn't really do that so much. Um what I would what I would do is hack all of the text files so to make uh, the rulers say funny things and and weird stuff. <laughs> that sounds fun. I wish I still had that. Uh, I think I wiped it off that hard drive, but I, I had a computer where I had just gone in and like hacked all the text files to, to you know to make Queen Elizabeth curse and. <laughs> Say crazy shit. If I recall, like, couldn't you make your ruler back in the older ones? Like, you could name him, and because now you're just it's it. I, I guess it's for. I like, think you could rename. Like they had default names, and then you could change it. Yeah, yeah, that does sound right. Yeah, and then you had to go back in. Like every once in a while, they would quiz you on like what was this on this page number of the manual. That was like the copy protection. The yeah. old school DRM stuff. Yeah, my favorite of those was Leisure Suit Larry, where they asked you questions <laughs> to try and test how old you were. <laughs> Yeah, but man, we could go old school gaming for a while. But um, no, so yeah, uh, no, I, I I don't mean to go back to it, but we didn't really completely finish. But no, movies anywhere is is cool, sure, sure. and I'm excited. And uh, it's uh, I think a lot of people that maybe were stuck in the I mean, again, being an Apple fanboy, a lot of people that were stuck in the Apple ecosystem because that's the one thing that holds you is if you buy a lot again like you said, it's been around for a while, but they fixed it with music a couple of years ago when they pulled all the DRM off the music. But movies is just one of those things that held strong. Yeah. And I don't think they'll get rid of DRM on movies because at this point uh, we all just stream. We right. don't care about downloading. And so there's not the pressure to be able to do things like there was with music for the longest time. 
And in fact, if music hadn't got rid of the DRM, I don't think they would get rid of it now because everybody streams it through Spotify and Apple Music and places like that. It's funny how that just uh, gradually changed. Uh, I spent so much time downloading music, especially obviously in the days of Napster and whatnot, but those files I kept and I still have, you know? Yeah. There was a long period of time where I'm putting things on my MP3 player, not my iPod, <laughs> but, you know, your Dell cre- DJ or something, not an iPod. Labs. I didn't go over to Apple until way after the iPod. I, I don't like the iPod. Zune? Yeah, a Zune. But it's funny over time how that just goes away. I mean, with the advent of Spotify coming to the United States, that was it for me. I was all done, and now I just stream. Right. And for as much music as I listen to, I mean, it's worth it, you know? Yeah, it's... I mean, I don't do a lot of music these days with podcasts. Uh, Podcasts and audiobooks consume my time more because I I feel like time goes by faster. It definitely does, especially podcasting. As I've said before, there's 60 or so podcasts I listen to throughout the day. I have no idea how you do it. I work for 12 hours and drive. <laughs> yeah. I have that's plenty the of key, time. right? The driving. Yeah. Plenty of time every that day. That used to be where I listened to all my podcasts and audiobooks and everything. And then I started working from home and I had to find other ways to listen to my podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little <laughs> afraid to switch professions for that reason. I'm going to miss all of those shows. It's Those are the people that I talk to throughout the day, you know? I have such a running yeah. continuity with all these shows. I'm going to be sad to miss them. Right. Now, the one thing that we haven't talked about yet, and it's uh, I had mentioned the show on the top of this show, but uh, so you also do a Star Wars podcast called Let's Talk About yeah. Star Wars with Jenny Joseph's in and Garrett Weinzerl. And uh, we got a new trailer on Monday, and I know that you are one of the people who likes to consume, 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 so I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, a couple um, of times. Yeah. Are you <laughs> pumped, excited? Do you have theories? Oh, yeah. I'm all of those things. It, it's so funny. Uh, on let's talk about star Wars this week. We pretty much talked about the trailer for the entire show. Like that. We were just breaking it down scene by scene on current geek earlier today. We brought it up and it became a conversation about not wanting to see trailers. Uh, and, and so it's, it's just amazing how there's all these different takes. On I stuff, remember but... that you guys equated it to, uh, to glu- uh, gluten. Yes. <laughs> Trailers, not seeing trailers are like gluten. There are the Jeff Kanatas of the world who are legitimately allergic to trailers, and that's fine. But then there's a lot of people <laughs> pretending they have the allergy to be cool. Right. Um, trailers don't bother me. I love, I love, I love the part of trying to divine what they mean. Right. And and well done trailers, even when they give away a lot of stuff, don't give away everything. There's always something else left. And the last Jedi trailer. I mean, it gives away a little more than any of the Force Awakens trailers did, but it doesn't give away a lot. I, and I, I am convinced that they are misleading you in a couple of places. Yeah, that that's they what are I was going to ask. Definitely faking you out. I think that when it comes to your assembly line Hollywood movie, in those trailers, you can tell when you're going to get a movie that has had everything given away in a trailer. But with Star Wars, I think there's a lot of sloppy cuts and obvious misleading images in that trailer. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of uh, showing a person with their voice playing, but they're they're not saying it in the video that you're seeing Mm -hmm. so that it's like, well, wait a minute. They're trying to make me think that she's reacting to what he just said or vice versa. But that's not what we saw. So I I think they are. I think they are trying to misdirect. Um, But then there's the stuff where you're like, okay. We definitely saw him standing in front of a room full of those things. And I'm, I'm trying not to say anything spoilery there. If there are somebody not wanting to watch the trailer, but they're like, Hey, well, I was, I mean, my next question was going to be total like potential spoilers. So, all right, fine. As long as we've warned them. <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't watched the trailer yet, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> it was partly why I kept to the end. Cause I noticed there was a bunch of new names who I presume were people that were fans of yours. So I wanted to, kind of get to what might make people tune out before we uh you know keep that till towards the back end but yeah no i um i agree with everything that you guys had said they definitely do like the quick cuts like it's my for me the three things that i noticed the most was when when snoke does the typical cliche star wars you must fulfill your destiny and that obviously raises questions. Uh, when Luke says that he wasn't scared enough before, he's scared now. And who was he talking about? We both kind of assumed Kylo. 
uh, while talking to Ray. And then uh, my assumption is, is the final scene where you have Kylo and Ray, I don't think they're actually together in that scene. I no. think it was. Yeah. No. I mean, no, he's got things not. burning behind him and she's got an almost different color of darkness behind her. Right. So. Now, yeah. what do you think about Luke saying that he was not scared enough in the first place? Is there any room for fear in the life of a Jedi? I, yeah. It's, when you're the last Jedi, you... <laughs> You kind of, you kind of, you're living on the fringes. Huh? You write the rule book, I guess. Um, now we had talked previously about gray Jedi, but do you think that they're really going to take the time in the movie universe to explain gray Jedi? It's way too complex. No, I, I think they'll hint around at it. I think they'll basically hint around that Luke is a gray Jedi without going down the road of, of having to explain everything. Yeah. I had said on it. a previous show that that's what they'll do is everything but in name. Yeah. So and those it, and, that know and, of it will know, but everybody else will just get the movie version. Because they've laid the ground version. for it in Rebels. They have a, a gray right. force creature. Um, the, the, so, uh, so, yeah. The giant it's, it's, ox it's looking not thing. That they won't touch it. Right. What is that character's name? I can't remember. He's like a big yeah. tree guy. He looks, doesn't he look like a big ox? That's what I see in my head. Like an the ox one, tree. He's the only tree there. He, 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 he I haven't watched it, no. Uh, if he wants to be seen, you'll see him. I've got him at some point, but I haven't. So, my, my assumption. Ben, ben do. do. Thank you, JF. Nicely DeBow. done, JF. Nice. Uh, my assumption is that I think that Kylo is extending his hand to Leia, and I think it's after he blows the ship up, but not completely. But I think oh, that's a that's an interesting thought. Yeah, he's definitely not extending it to the ray we see there after he says that thing. Right. But he might be extending it to Ray later. That could be. Right? Like but just I, not not in response to her saying I I I need to find my place. I think she's saying that to Luke. Yeah. I don't think see, she's saying I, that. To see, Kyle. I have an alternate theory there too, but but I think ultimately because I mean obviously we know that the original plan was for Leia to be strong in nine. We know that's yeah. not going to happen because they confirmed that they're not going to CGI her. Right. Mm, you have to kind of assume she dies in eight somehow. So I don't know though. They had already shot eight front to back. They would actually have to change it for her to die. Well, I would think that I if don't she think would she dies in eight. I think she still dies in nine, and we just don't see, see it, it happen, yeah. right? Because see, that was my potential thought was that she was in like because obviously they they showed at least what they led us to believe was that what they showed him trying to blow up the ship she's in. Yeah, like that was what they implied there. Well, and, I get the sense that they're talking. They're forced. Yeah. They're like, right. like, like Leia and Luke in Bespin. They're yeah. communicating yeah. Right. as he as he arrives. And I don't think Kylo. I this is going to be a redemption of Kylo. I think. I think Kylo's redemption begins when he can't blow up his mom. He's killed his dad, but he can't blow up his mom. He's a mama's boy. See, which, that was going to be my question: was Do you think he ends up killing both of his parents? No. See, okay. uh, yeah, it's either he does or he doesn't. But I think where he's been fighting the light this whole time, that's going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. Because it is he's kinda... not going to be able to do it. And I totally agree with you in that they're force linking or whatever in that scene. I didn't even think about I'm that. I'm your mother, damn it. You can't yeah. kill me. <laughs> what are you doing? Your father, Man. I get it. He was a scoundrel, whatever. <laughs> He was a bastard. Damn nerf herder. <laughs> Let him go. Well, and that's, I mean, you, Star Wars is built on these old tropes, right? These Joseph Campbell mythologies. And, and, and those mythologies generally, you know, the, the son wants to kill the father and take his place. It doesn't want to kill the mother. Yeah, no, I could see that. That makes sense. I like it. I don't like the, I'm, I'm a, I'm a dark side guy. So I don't like the idea of Kylo being redeemed because I like Kylo. Yeah, but, but for uh, the sake of the story, the story that's what will have would, to happen. Yeah. What I would like to see is, and I'm sure we will, backstory on Luke. I'd like to know whether or not he actually fell to the dark side for a time in canon. Or has that happened and been brought back into canon? Yeah. yeah I yeah. don't think it has. But really quick. Or will they, will, will they bring that back in? Yeah. yeah. Also, also, it looks like those books that are in the little tree hut thing is something that Ray and Luke are going to go in search of, but I haven't, I can't decide if it's on the Island, if it's on Skellig <laughs> or, or if they go, if they leave, if they leave together to go to another planet. I wonder when he went to that planet, that was to find the first Jedi temple. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I wonder if when he goes there, he finds something else that sends him further mm. and then that's mm. their mission. 
That Maybe. could be so kind of implying like <clears throat> as much as we don't want this to be episode five in HD, uh, like that this is gonna be like Luke and Ray is gonna be very much Yoda and Luke and you the must movie, go to the deck of our system. <clears throat> yeah, Point two. and the movie's gonna kind of revolve around the dark side. Like I Leave mean now, help your Finn you could. <laughs> Uh, so really quick, my, um, my, my thought, uh, now this is based and I don't know if these rumors have been confirmed or ultimately refuted or what, maybe, you know, and you could tell me, uh, cause the rumors were that Hayden Christensen was at the filming for episode eight. So yeah, I don't, I, I don't know that that's been confirmed or, or, or okay. anything. Cause it, my thought is that Anakin somehow gets resurrected and she's talking to Anakin. Hmm. Whether I, it be I think if that, Anakin shows up, it's force ghosty. Well, I don't think it's well. She could be talking to him as a force ghost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but but yeah, I mean that 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 could happen because that goes to my. I mean, I I don't know. Do you have do you have your own thoughts and opinions on what you think Ray's lineage might be? I, I I've I've gone through them all. Yeah. I don't think she's a Kenobi anymore. I've seen some compelling evidence there, but I just don't. I don't feel that that works. I don't think Obi Wan has a daughter out there that either he's not aware of somehow because he's too force sensitive or that he ignores uh, and just focuses on Luke. I think his hermit in the, in Tatooine story is weakened if he has a, a daughter. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't think it's him. I really think it should be a Skywalker because it's the Skywalker saga. And obviously Ray is the hero and that makes the most sense. And that's still where I majority believe, but the idea that she could be Palpatine's daughter is, is pretty fascinating. I hadn't heard that uh, one. And there's oh, no intense. rule against that. Right. And it could definitely be why someone goes and sticks her on Jakku and hides her because she would be someone that many, many different powers like Sloan and, and Snoke would, would want to find. Did you guys hear about the reveal and rumors that followed when it came to Battlefront 2? And the cinematics that were part because Battlefront Two is canon, yeah, and it was shown in the cinematics that Palpatine is indeed alive after he fell off the Death Star in Episode Six, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm wondering what that means, and could we get Ian in this movie in any way? Uh, I mean, the, the, he's dead in so much of the rest of the canon that I, f I feel like that would be that would be a tough one. Yeah, because I've read a lot of the comics and the books at this point, and they pretty much the entire empire agrees that he's dead. Okay, I would not and like there's that. There's even a bunch of back. clones stored away that somebody like eliminates. Right, and th that was one of the theories that I had read was that he did have a bunch of clones of himself. So in Episode Six, it was a clone that took the plummet, and it wasn't mm -hmm. actually Palpatine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing I wanted to run by, and, and I apologize to regular listeners who have heard this theory from me a couple of times, uh, my Snoke theory. I think Snoke is Anakin's father. I think it's Plagueis. And the reason I say Anakin's father is because we know that Plagueis had the power to manipulate the Force to create life from nothing. Mm -hmm. And we know that Anakin didn't have a father. And it would tie right in with the fact that this whole thing is the Skywalker saga. And so when Plagueis was killed by Palpatine, he didn't stay killed. Mm no. Okay. Yeah, because again, Plagueis, the one the, the 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 dark art that he was practicing was the ability to resurrect and be immortal. Yeah. And that and would so explain they, the 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 scars and the deformity. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it also great it would, grandpa. It would but, explain okay. how he would he, track down Kylo cuz he's bloodline. I'm convinced that Snoke is not very good at the Force or may not even be able to use the Force at all because he's always asking Kylo to do it. And also he would have helped Kylo build a better lightsaber than that janky piece of crap he's got now. I love the broadsword saber. <laughs> oh no, it's great. But it's, it's so, you know, it's obviously not perfected. Right. So I feel like Snoke is not a Sith. Do you think that, well, really quick on the lightsaber, do you think, cause we know that re that, that red, Caber, or red crystals are, are synthetic. They're not actual crystals, right. which mm -hmm. means he has to craft it. And when you craft it, I can, and this works for Jedi with the legitimate crystals too, but your, your emotions go into the crystal. So yeah. obviously he's an unstable little boy who throws temper tantrums. So it's not so much that it's 
uh, it's poorly crafted, just that it's overflowing with emotion, just like he is. I don't know. I mean, I get angry when I have to craft things, too. It's just so <laughs> tedious. <laughs> I mean, I love Kylo. Kylo's my favorite of the Sith. I know people say Maul, and that's fine. I I was mm. sitting on the edge of my seat at episode, because I saw it opening night, obviously, and I was sitting there at the edge of my seat when he was fighting Rey. I'm like, if they Darth Maul him, I'm going to be pissed. And uh, I thought for sure she decapitated him when all she did was leave the scar on his face. Yeah. I thought for sure he was I like his carbon done. fiber Band-Aid in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. I, d I didn't care for that at all. So JF in the chat says, am I the only one who saw the headstone type thing at Luke's feet at the end of Force Awakens? Thoughts? Um, that I mean, that's actually there on Skellig because that's a burial area for monks. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's just the uh, past Jedi. Is that how they're going to work I'd say that, that could be. Well, yeah, because I mean, that's I mean, going way, way back. That's the whole thing with Jedi is they're based loosely around monks, right? Yeah. Well, they're wizards. So they're space wizards. No. Yeah, I was reading. I was starting to read the comics about the origin of the Jedi, and they they came from a planet, and and the Sith were a race from from a planet called Sith, and they were part of the Jedi at that time. And I, I have vague recollections of what's in that that comic, and I know it's not canon anymore anyway. But, right. Speaking um, of yeah. speaking of going back that far, have you? Any thought on the potential rumors that after episode nine and what is hopefully the conclusion of the Skywalker saga that we're going to get an old Republic trilogy? Um, I mean, yeah, that's great. That sounds great. I, I'll make up that rumor, too, because I would like that to happen. But <laughs> there's absolutely no basis in reality for it. I don't think Lucasfilm even knows if they want to do that yet. The only I would think the only potential thought would be that they've recanonized the game. And then also they confirmed in Rebels. Yeah, Rebels is where that got recanonized. Right, because it was the Mandalorian yeah. Wars. Right. So they finally well, sure. officially talked about it. Here's the problem with trying to read the tea leaves like that is we start to ascribe godlike powers to people at studios who aren't as good at planning <laughs> as we might want them to be. <laughs> right. So Dave Filoni is like, man, I love the old Republic. I'm going to put some old Republic in Rebels. And the guys doing the games are like, hey, can we do some old Republic? And Kathleen Kennedy's like, yeah, you know, we might want to do some old Republic stuff at some point. And I know Dave's really into it. So, yeah, yeah, put some old Republic <laughs> stuff in there. And then we're all like, they have a master plan for the old Republic. And it's like, no, they're they're leaving some doors open for themselves. But right. they they haven't even – they can't even keep a director <laughs> on a movie at this point. Yeah, I don't true. think they've, they've nailed down what all of their future movies are going to be. Are you uh, – speaking of the director, are you happy with J.J. coming back? Yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, I I liked the Force Awakens, uh, and I like that that the guy who sort of started the story off with Lawrence Cra or with with Larry uh, is going to finish it, and and I feel like that can be a problem when you have a different director finish uh, a storyline. Having Ryan Johnson in the middle is great. Having JJ there, beginning and end, I I think is 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 going to be unexpectedly good. I'm a little less confident about Ron Howard coming in on Han Solo, not because I have any doubts about Ron Howard, but just because he was brought in so late. Right. That's and they've really done so hard much since anybody. then. Yeah. They've haven't they added new characters and new cast members and just all of this other stuff in their reshoots? Yeah. I mean, well, they've done significant reshoots on something that was really far along. So right. they must have. That was that was the film that was done by uh the two guys from Lego movie, right? Yeah. Where they yeah, wanted to Lord make it Miller. their... Yes. And they were... I guess it was too comical. Let's make it our own. No. Yeah. This is Star Wars. I think the only thing that potentially concerns me with Nine is that they... And, and there were a couple of theories behind this, but they offered they offered it to Ryan first, and he said no, and then gave it to JJ. So it almost makes you like, is Kathleen Kennedy that hard to work for? Where Ryan was like, no, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> Well, it could be that. It could be that he had other projects and he's like, no, I did, I did my part. Right. You know? He got um, to do his Star Wars movie. I don't want to just keep doing Star Wars forever. That may be too well, much. I think once you've had a Star Wars movie, you're basically free to follow whatever passion right. you have. If That's you have true. a pet project, you're going to be able to do it now. So we'll grab this from the chat really quick and then we'll get ready to wrap up because we know you're not feeling too well. Uh, JF says, unless the very idea of having perhaps Ray not be a Skywalker would be to branch away from the saga after episode nine. 
Do you I think mean, she's strong enough of a of, character to force that? It's the kind of thing that's reverse logic, right? It's the Skywalker saga until the end. <laughs> um, maybe. Maybe you say it's the Skywalker saga because we tell the story of Luke and Leia, right? And then they help Palpatine's daughter uh, carry on the Force or, or whoever Rey is. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, yes, that that certainly could be. I don't know if that makes me happy, but it wouldn't be wrong. If they branch away from Skywalker's uh, post episode no, if nine, they, if they made Ray not be a Skywalker, so that then after the Skywalker saga, right. they can they could say, oh well, now we're doing we're doing different stuff. Right. Well, what I was gonna do was if they do that, if they if they do break away from Skywalker and do something else, do they call it episode ten, or do you think that they leave that no, one? No, no, okay. I don't think there's there. I think it would be a huge mistake to ever call anything episode ten. X e- episode X. Episode X, yeah. Not episode X, that's fine. Right, right, just not 10. Oh, it's Star Wars X, that's the next thing we're doing. Be a problem when we get to 30. See, it sounds really cool when you say Star Wars X. Right? Yeah, but then we had Jason X, and that wasn't really cool. That was in a galaxy (laughs) far, far away, too. It was, that was in space. So he he ends up in the fucking galaxy. Well, no, see, then if you make Star Wars X, it has to be on Earth. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. Jason X was in space, so they have to counter that. No, never mind. It was no, a dumb I joke. See. It's late. Star Wars X <laughs> needs to be what Alien 5 would have been where the aliens ended up on Earth. Uh, Do you I, remember the end I of Alien Resurrection? The, they were crashing to Earth. I saw the first Alien movie. Come on, man. Now I'm starting to think it's going to be Star Wars 1980, and they're going to be in orbit sending Starbuck down for missions. Ridley Scott's Star Wars. Ridley Did you ever Scott. see Battlestar 1980? No, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they're uh, like, we can pay Lauren Green enough to do a voiceover for for every episode, and then we'll shoot everything else in L.A. Is it as bad as Battlestar Galactica? Or no, uh, Battlefield Earth. Is, I mean, Battlefield Earth. Uh, Too- well, it's it's much worse than all of those. It has worse effect. I mean, it has no effect. Basically, they just kept the Battlestar set for Lauren Green to stand on every every episode and go go down to Earth and do this now, but don't let them see us. <laughs> interesting not it, interesting almost hard like, pass almost like where like power rangers was all of the footage from the japanese show and then they just filmed other stuff in a high school cafeteria set battlestar <laughs> in 1980 is the joey to battlestar galactica's friends ah okay i could see that i've never really been a fan of battlestar at all anyway starbuck cylons no thank you i'll take star wars and star trek yeah, I won't even take Star Trek. I'll take Star Wars. Get out of here. <laughs> I'll take them all. I'm hungry. I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm not a sci-fi guy. I like Star Wars cuz to me Star Wars resonates as more fantasy than than sci-fi. Cuz they're space wizards and they have sword fights. Like Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but all the tropes way are more fantasy, fantasy tropes. You're right. Yeah. Um but like uh Star Trek Never, I I had friends that watched TNG. I I just I never caught on. That being said, I love the Orville, which we also didn't talk about on the other podcast. But have you been watching that at all, Orville? Yeah, I I haven't watched this week's episode, but uh, I've been fascinated. I didn't mean to watch it. I just watched <laughs> the pilot because I'm like, oh, I got nothing else to watch. It's on Hulu. I'll see it. And then Hulu started suggesting it because, right. and then I'm like, oh, well, I guess I've got you know a little time. I'll watch it again. It's just it's got that classic Star Trek feel to it. Yeah, I with a little bit of humor. It's no, what really I'm fun. most excited to see is that they're actually watching TV on the ship, right? Yeah. That's a thing that happens. You don't see that in any other sci fi. No, yeah, yeah. I like Well, it. And, and just, you know, all all like like I saw the preview for this week's episode where he's like, you know, open a channel and then just starts talking. She's like, Wait, hold on, I haven't I have got the channel Perfect. open yet. Perfect. Do you watch The Expanse? Oh yeah, I, I love, love that show. Expanse. That's so great. So I can't cool. wait for that to come back. I'm a huge fan of those books. I've been reading them since uh, since the Leviathan Wakes uh, came out. Yep. And and I'm just I could not could not be happier with a TV series taken from a beloved print publication and turned yep. into into television. So my good. room looks a lot like your backdrop. It's all books, so <laughs> I can relate. Gotcha. I'm the digital guy. Everything's on a hard drive somewhere. Right. Speaking of books, I kind of feel like a dick. I um, we didn't even talk about your book, uh, other than when we well, talked we about, about the X's X's a lot. Right, so it's the X. Close. Yeah. So um, I mean, I I don't I don't want to overkeep you where you weren't feeling good. Are you 
Are you cool? How are you yeah, on time? Yeah, we, we, I, I could talk a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, because I want to at least give you a chance to plug your book. Uh, yeah, I know course. we've, we've um, talked about it a bunch of times because JF is a regular guest. And oh, so books are always getting talked we'll about. Talk about JF's book then. Well, we, well, we just talk about books in general. And we talk yeah. about ink shares and, and things like that. So, but yeah, so you are an author of, of you have another book that's, I, I think you said is, is coming out soon or you're working on? Yes. Uh, down here. <laughs> so, um, Pilot X uh, came out in March, and that's through Inkshares, so it's available in bookstores everywhere, and it's about a time traveler who just wants to fly his time ship, but he gets pulled into all this political stuff in the universe, and at the end has to face a horrible decision where he can either save the universe or his own people. Um, so it's, it's, it's a it's a fun time travel adventure. And the thing that I tried very hard to do, and most people have told me that they think I succeeded was follow my principle of time travel, which is you can't go back in time and change things. Like if something happened, it happened. If you know it happened, then, and if you went back and affected it, you already affected it. You already feel the effects. You can't, you can't just go back and, and change things. So I tried to tell a story that even with that principle in place, there would still be surprises because just like, you know, you can't change geography. The earth is the earth uh, when you also haven't visited everywhere. So you can visit a place that's existed forever and be surprised because you haven't seen it before. Same with time. Like time is vast. So there can be parts of it that no one talked about before that you can visit and be surprised. Anyway, that's way more than I expected to say about Pilot X. Uh, but I've got another book coming out called Pavaria, which is uh, like about a, a uh, generation ship that suffers a power failure and large parts of the ship forget that they're a ship. That sounds awesome. That sounds really cool, especially because I, did you see the episode of the Orville? Yes. As soon as I saw that episode, I tweeted that the Orville has stolen the plot of my next book. <laughs> <laughs> um, although my story is very different than the story in the Orville. Uh, I was like, oh man, really? There we go. Annalisa in the chat. Ooh, can't wait to read that. <clears throat> nope, that sounds really cool. I uh, I will have to add that to my so, collection. So yeah, um, you can order a print copy of it right now if you're a patron of my writer's Patreon, which is patreon.com slash ace detect. Uh, and very soon I'll be putting those links out everywhere at tomerrittbooks.com uh, and stuff. And then uh, I'm working on the ebook version of it soon. So maybe this weekend I'll get that taken care of. Very cool. Yeah, and then any, uh, now are there any plans for audiobook? Yeah, so Pilot X had an audiobook because it was done through Inkshares and it's not read by me. Uh, I have not done audiobooks for the past two books that I put out on my own just because of time. Right. Um, but I'm committed to doing this and I'll probably do it through my Patreon first. Okay. And then once it's all down, then put it up on Audible. Very cool. So like doing it through Patreon, would you do it like like chapter by chapter? Uh, maybe not chapter by chapter, but like 30 minutes at a shot. Right. All right, that would be that actually would be pretty cool. That makes me want to go become a patron. Thirty minutes or an hour, right? Knows. Somewhere like we'll that. See. Yeah, no, that sounds yeah. cool because that that's my like we talked about. That's my main consumption. It's it's podcasts and audiobooks. Yeah. And, um. So no, it's 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 cool. Audiobooks for me are are, are great because I I get to consume things that I wouldn't normally because you can do other things while you're and as long as it's not attention required. Uh, yeah. you know, you can focus on what you're listening to and it lets you, it's, it's funny. I can listen to podcasts while I cook because if I miss a few words, it's fine. Uh, cause I'm, you know, if I'm paying attention to something, I can't do audiobooks while I cook as easily though. Cause I'll, I'll find that, that I got distracted and I'm, I missed an important yeah. plot point. And I, I, I'm I more need, obsessive about books. I need way. to have books, something tactile where I can weave the story in my mind. A podcast is like a conversation that just it's ongoing. It you can kind of jump in and out, but you need the details yeah, yeah. in a book. Right. Like I can't do, I know some people who do audiobooks while they drive and I couldn't do that because I have to remain somewhat focused. I have to be driving somewhere where I, I really know the route. I'm not right. going to have to worry about. Right. But like I work, my, my full-time job is I work for the postal service uh -huh. and I work in the processing plant. It's a very mindless job. Yeah, so, so you, can, you, you don't have to pay attention. Right, yeah. So <laughs> well, I mean, you I, have to pay attention, but I know what you mean. Well, I pay attention to the book. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually getting ready to go through, then my next book for consumption is uh, Origin, the next uh, Dan Brown book featuring Robert Langdon. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of that series. So, but cool. Uh, do you want to go ahead and drop your links uh, where people can find some of your stuff and listen to your shows yeah. and whatnot? 
I mean, it's it's pretty easy. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, I, I talk about all the stuff that I do there. Um, just look for Tom Merritt in the search. It's Ace Detect, A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T -E -E is, is the actual name. I also own the Tom Merritt Twitter, and that'll lead you to the proper uh, Twitter account as well. TomMerritt.com is my website. It's ugly, but it's got everything there. And TomMerrittBooks.com has all my books. Very cool. Uh, so, Tom, let us thank you again for uh, for coming on the show, taking the time, especially when you weren't feeling too great. But we got through it. Yeah, it went, no, it was it a pleasure. Well. You guys kept me kept my mind off it. It was good. <laughs> we did our best. It was a great conversing. So I mean, I was excited to get on here and kind of pick your brain and, and figure out kind of what your thoughts were. I was super pumped to talk about Star Wars. I'm happy that nothing disappointed at all. Um, I will give a shout for that show. I'm a couple weeks behind, which is why I wanted your your nitpick of the uh, the trailer, but uh, big fan of yours and big fan of Garrett's and uh, let's talk about Star Wars is awesome. So I, I can't talk about uh, Tom's stuff enough. So if you listen to our stuff and you enjoyed this hour, um, I highly recommend checking out everything that he does because he does a lot of cool work. Thanks, and man. Uh, ask him the origin story of Ace Detect someday because it's a fun little story that I got to hear at Nerdacular. <laughs> you can follow. You can you can find it on on YouTube somewhere too. I think there's a Bitly link that points to it. Oh, is there? <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Uh, as for this show, you can watch the show live every Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash inkedgeekstudios. If you would like to support this show or any other show on Inked Geek Studios, please go to patreon.com slash IG Studios. As our biggest fan, Annalisa says, give him a dollar. Um, it helps support this show, all geeked up, uh, indie case files and everything else that we do. Oh, there she is. Thank you very much. Uh, if you subscribe to this in podcast form, thank you very much for listening to the recorded version. And please consider listening live. Uh, the live chat room is a lot of fun. A lot of really cool people there. Uh, to all the new faces that showed up tonight, thank you guys very much. If you want to stick around and, and toss us a follow, that would be awesome. We do live shows four nights a week. Uh, and they're all somewhat geek related in many ways. So oh, they're all over the place. They are. They are. But they're a lot of fun. So, And to our usual crew of, of live listeners as always, you guys rock. And uh, hey, we can't thank you guys enough. Uh, Tom, thanks again, man. And Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. We hope, you, uh, we hope you feel better soon. Traveling can always kind of get you, uh, get you not feeling Someday too good. Someday we will have the technology to make airplanes that don't infect people. Yeah. Or we'll just, well, do, we'll just do VR. You just need a transporter <laughs> so you can be scrubbed. Yes, right. Exactly. Yeah, beam me up. And uh, good biofilters. Exactly. Indeed. So for Tom, for Brandon, for myself, and for the rest of Ink to Geek Studios, thank you all very much for listening, and we will see you guys next week.